well the next step in the fabrication of the complete denture of the articulation it's the teeth arrangement so before the teeth arrangement the teeth should be selected now what are the objectives in the teeth selection so first of all is the harmony with the surrounding tissue the chosen teeth first of all should be should blend with the patient facial structure and surrounding tissue that would create a natural appearance second it helps to second if the maintenance of the vertical dimension third is the efficiency in the mastication the teeth it must facilitate efficient chewing and biting function to ensure that the patient it can he can properly break down the food for digestion now a dentist he can select either posterior teeth or the anterior teeth the posterior teeth they are chosen primarily based on their functionality in chewing whereas the anterior teeth the dentist would prefer the anterior teeth for the aesthetic so the anterior teeth are selected for the aesthetic to enhance the smile appearance of the patient what are the general consideration while the teeth selecting first of all the uh, important is the patient positioning so a dentist ensure that the patient he is comfortably seated upright with with the relaxed facial muscles so important is relaxed facial muscles that is important for evaluating how the teeth they will fit naturally the second important uh, thing is operator positioning as well as lightening so which uh, lightening is preferred generally natural daylight neon or fluorescent light it is it is preferred it is essential for accurately assessing the tooth shade form and the overall appearance now what are the factors that we choose to for the anterior teeth select, selection so we consider factors like the shape size color as well as form now let us discuss them all one by one the first is the size of the anterior teeth so the following method we use a dentist use to guide to select the size of the teeth the first is the method using the pre extraction records so here the pre extraction records like the diagnostic cast number 1 number 2 photograph number 3 radiograph number 4 teeth of the closely relatives and preserved extracted teeth can be used to determine the size of the artificial teeth first is the diagnostic cast so they are prepared before the extraction of teeth so the operator he can get a idea about size and shape of the teeth from this cast second is the pre extraction photograph photograph showing the lateral anterior view of the patient should be taken before the extraction so these photographs they must show the incisal edges of the anterior teeth so that helps to determine the exact width and the outline of the teeth the third the best method is to uh, collect the preserved extracted tooth so that is the best method to determine the size of the anterior tooth so the exact details about the size contour can be recorded by this method other methods are the anthropological measurement of the patient so anthropological measurement are usually post extraction records that are made from the edentulous patient what are those let us discuss them the first is anthropometric cephalic index so here the transverse circumference of the head so uh, this 
this circumference as shown in the diagram it is measured using a measuring tape at the level of the forehead so that the width of the upper central incisors it can be calculated by the formula uh, the total width of the upper and upper anterior is it is calculated by uh, dividing the circumference of head so this one is the circumference of the head divided by 13 other other thing that we can use is other thing that we can use is the uh, bizygomatic width now what is bizygomatic width so bizygomatic width it is it is defined as the distance measured between the malar process on the either side so suppose these are the malar prominence and the distance measured between the malar prominence on the both side that would determine the bizygomatic width now the width of the upper central upper anterior tooth it can be calculated by the formula that is bizygomatic width divided by 3.36 so that's the formula the width of mandibular anterior teeth is 4/5 of the upper anterior other other is the berry biometric index so here the width as well as the length of the face uh, can be used to derive the width of the central incisors so the width of central incisors uh, they can be calculated by using two things one is the bizygomatic width and other is the length of the face so the formula is the width of the maxillary central incisors it can be calculated by the bizygomatic width divided by 16 and width of the men, uh, of the maxillary central incisors uh, if you know the length it can be calculated by dividing length of face by 20 so if you know the bizygomatic width uh, that would be by uh, divided by 16 that would give idea of the width of maxillary central incisors and if you know the length of face then the width it is calculated by length of the face divided by 20 the other is the pons formula so pons he pons he derived two formula that are used to determine the width and length of the central incisors using the bizygomatic width the width of the maxillary central incisors it is it is calculated by formula by zygomatic width divided by 16 and length it is measured by length of face divided by 16 now what are the uh, other things that we can use to calculate other things that we can use is based on the width of nose the width of nose it is equal to the combined width of the anti uh, of the anterior teeth other anatomical landmarks that we can use is the size of the maxillary arch and location of the canine eminence buccal frenum attachment uh, so the attachment of the buccal the location of the canine eminence the canine eminence it is formed in the region between canine and first premolar after the extraction of tooth so this measure would uh, this measure value would give the combined width for the anterior teeth second the location of the buccal frenum attachment the attachment of the buccal frenum they are marked on the residual ridge the distance between two marking would give the combined width of the maxillary anteriors other is the uh, location of the ala of the nose so here the patient is asked to sit upright and look straight the line that would pass through the midpoint between the eyebrows and lateral end of the ala of nose uh, extending on the occlusion rims that would give the combined width of the anterior teeth other is the location of the corner of the mouth so the corner of mouth it marks the distal end of the canine now various methods that are used by theoretical concept uh, that includes number one is the winkler concept so winkler he gave the concept that the teeth they are should be selected based on three different views what are those 
फर्स्ट इज फिजोलॉजिकल सेकेंड इज साइकोलॉजिकल एंड थर्ड इज बायो मैकेनिकल द फर्स्ट इज फिजियोलॉजिकल सेकेंड साइकोलॉजिकल एंड थर्ड इज बायो मैकेनिकल सो द फिजियोलॉजिकल बायोलॉजिकल so this view it will focus on the natural aspect of the patient physiology and biology that uh, that consider number one the facial musculature and aesthetics the arrangement of teeth should be should account for the influence of the facial muscles on appearance like changes in the denture base thickness in certain areas like the labial and buccal sulci it can affect the aesthetic of the face so increasing the thickness of the denture base in these area they may create a puffy appearance that would alter the overall facial aesthetic second altering the vertical dimension of the denture it can impact the facial wrinkles so increasing the vertical dimension might lead to fading or reduction of the certain facial wrinkles third is evaluation of the perioral tissue the dentist he should assess the perioral tissues that is the tissue that surrounds the mouth to understand their contour shape and how the arrangement of teeth might affect these tissues the second is psychological perspective patient self evaluation affect their smile someone with positive self evaluation they tends to exhibit a broad smile while someone with a negative self evaluation they may have a closed or tight lipped smile so this different smile can influence how the teeth should be arranged in denture to create a natural and comfortable appearance for the patient the second is camphor line that is used in a psychological plane so the camphor line we know it's also known as facial axil line so that is imaginary line that passes through the specific facial landmark the first is the tragus of the ear that is a small point eminence of the external ear and second is the ala of nose so the ala of nose is wing like outer part of the nostril so the camphor line it extends from the lower border of tragus of ear to the ala of the nose so remember in patient experiencing happiness or positivity this camphor line it appears elevated or positioned in more upward direction whereas patient who are depressed the camphor line may be observed as tilted downward or positioned differently the third is the biomechanical perspective the here the placement of teeth they are important the teeth placement should consider the functional balance within the oral cavity instead of setting the teeth strictly on the outer side outer or the inner side of ridge they should be arranged within the neutral zone so this zone represents the equilibrium between the buccal and the lingual musculature so the teeth should be set should be arranged within which zone neutral zone the third typical form and that import that is important is theory by williams so this theory it helps to determine the size and form of the anterior teeth according to him the shape of teeth it should be inverse of the shape of the face so if the face it tapers downward the teeth should taper upward however in the steen he opposed this concept he said that the shape of teeth may not vary for each individual according to him outline of teeth it is not important because it is likely to change throughout the life he proposed that the color size form and contour they are the most important factors to be that are to be considered during the teeth selection the william concept here uh, he stated that the taper of the tooth it is exactly opposite to the facial taper so suppose this one is the facial taper of a person the taper of tooth would be exactly opposite to that of the facial taper 
other theory is by con a theory concept of harmony by white according to him the size and color of tooth should be in harmony with the with the size of head and the color of the eye so what are the factors that influence the size of tooth that are the size of face interarch spacing length of lips second comes is the form of the anterior teeth the form or the outline of the anterior teeth it can be determined by by using following factors the first is the shape of the patient face second patient profile third is dentogenic concept the first shape of the patient that was given by williams according to him the facial form can be described as four types what are those ovoid tapering square or combination of these second is patient profile patient may have a convex straight or concave profile so the labial form of the labial form should be straight for patient with straight profile convex for the patient with convex profile the third important is the dentogenic concept so it includes three factors what are those number one is the sex second personality and third is the age so it is also known as spa factor so who gave who described dentogenic concept it was fresh and fisher so important for your entrance exam is fresh and fisher described this dentogenic concept so according to him the three factors uh, that matters sex personality and the age the first is the sex so the form of the or the shape of tooth differs in male and female in males the incisal angle they are rounded to less degree and the teeth they are more angular whereas in female the incisal angle they are more rounded and teeth they have less angulation for males the incisal edge of the central incisor it should be parallel to lips and the lateral they are above the occlusion plane but for the but the but for the females the incisal edge and the lateral the incisal edge of the central and the lateral incisor they follow the curve of the lower lip in the female in the males the mesial end of the lateral they are hidden by the central so that makes the canine very prominent in the male in female only the mesial third of the canine they are visible because they are rotated anteriorly whereas uh, even the middle two third of canine they are visible in the male the second factor is the age the age of patient it is important in the teeth selection so with age following changes they are seen first you will see decrease in the muscle tone second there would be sagging of cheeks third there would be sagging of lower lip so in order to prevent the cheek biting due to the sagging the horizontal overlap of the posterior tooth uh, that can be increased second uh, the interocclusal distance it reduces with age so that is why the mandibular teeth they are more visible than the maxillary teeth third the older people they have abraded teeth you will see older people with abraded teeth with worn out contacts so the placement of contoured teeth they will look artificial other is old patient they have a gingival recession so we can reproduce that in dentures in order to give a natural smile the color of teeth also changes with age in old people the enamel it is abraded and the dentine it carries a yellow tinge that is more visible the third concept is the personality the dentist should select and arrange the teeth so that it improves the patient uh, personality so people who are so individual who exude vigor 
more squarish and larger teeth they are often selected so these type of teeth they can complement and enhance the appearance of vigorous personality second is executive or the professional individual so this refers to the alignment lining the front teeth in a straight line that would create a more leveled appearance so this appearance might impart a sense of seriousness or professionalism the third is executive might benefit from the smaller teeth that are symmetrically placed so this arrangement can contribute to more refined and balanced appearance that is suitable for the professional roles so that is all about the dentogenic concept the next comes the color for the anterior teeth so how would you select the color for the anterior teeth so before selecting the color for the anterior teeth some basic concept about color that you should be that you should understand what are those the first is the hue second is saturation third is value and fourth is translucency what do you mean by hue the hue the hue refers to the specific color that is produced by a particular wavelength of light so it can be any color like orange red green etc second is the saturation saturation or it is also known as chroma the saturation it signifies the intensity or amount of color per unit area so highly saturated colors they lack depth so balance it is necessary to avoid an artificial look the third is brilliance or value the brilliance or value it denotes the lightness or the darkness of an object so it is about the diluting the color with black or white to produce either lighter or darker shade another important property is translucency translucency it is the property of partially allowing light passes through an object suppose this one is an object and you are passing a light through it if the light passes through it then the object is said to be translucent so remember the teeth especially the enamel it possesses high brilliance and translucency so the artificial tooth should replace and replicate this property for a more natural appearance now let us discuss what are the factors that would affect the tooth hue and brilliance the first is the age well the younger individual they tends to have a lighter teeth Uh, due to this occurs due to the translucency of enamel whereas the older individual they have a darker and more opaque teeth due to secondary dentine deposition so that reduces the size of the pulp chamber other affecting things could be habits complexion eyes and hair color all contributes to overall appearance of tooth that should be considered while selecting tooth color for the most natural outcome now what are the factors that have affect the tooth appearance and the color selection first of all uh, what is the aging effect on tooth appearance well the teeth in the older individual they look shiny uh, because of regular wear of the teeth over time that can result in smooth appearance giving older individual teeth a shinier look apart from that you would see brownish tinge and discoloration Uh, that occurs due to the exposed dentine that tends to stain over time uh, habits like smoking alcohol consumption pan chewing can cause tooth discoloration due to the stains so porcelain teeth they are preferred for individual with such habits now what are the steps in selecting color for the anterior teeth the reference point on the face for the tooth color selection could be side of nose under the lips with the incisal edge exposed so that indicates how the tooth would appear when the patient is relaxed under the lips with the ma- with the mouth wide open only cervical third is covered that would provide idea of tooth appearance during a smile next important part is what is squint test so what is squint test it is effective method used by dentist to assess and compare the color harmony between the artificial teeth and the patient face so what is the primary objective of the squint test 
इट्स टू अवेलुएट एंड कंपेयर द कलर ऑफ आर्टिफिशियल टीथ विद द नेचुरल कलर ऑफ द पेशेंट फेस सो द डेंटिस्ट पार्शली क्लोज इज देयर आईज टू रिड्यूस द इनकमिंग लाइट क्रिएटिंग सम वट ब्लर्ड विजन वाइल स्क्विंटिंग द डेंटिस्ट कंपेयर द आर्टिफिशियल टीथ ऑफ डिफरेंट शेड विद द कलर ऑफ द पेशेंट फेस now the dentist notes which color tooth fade first from their view while squinting the tooth color that fades or blend more seamlessly uh, with the face color is considered less contrasting so the color of the teeth that fades or blends into face color first during the squint test it is it is it is perceived as least contrasting so this test would aid in selecting a tooth color that closely matches the natural appearance of the patient face now now let us discuss the selection for the posterior teeth for the denture so where key factors here are considered the first is the buccolingual width second is the mesiodistal length and third it's the occluso gingival height the buccolingual width it refers to the width of the tooth from the cheek to the tongue side so it is important to decrease this width to allow the buccal and lingual surfaces of teeth to slope out from the occlusal surfaces so this slope would have provide a appropriate path for food during chewing so if the buccal buccolingual width it increases then the force acting on denture would also increase that would increase the rate of the ridge resorption so broader teeth can enroach on tongue space causing instability in the denture also cheek biting uh, can occur that can cause discomfort and stability instability in the denture the second is the mesiodistal length it is important to ensure that the combined length of all posterior does not all the posterior on one side of arch it does not exceed the distance between canine and the retromolar pad so placing posterior teeth over steep anterior posterior ridge slopes can lead to forward displacement of the denture similarly placing teeth over movable tissue like the retromolar pad it can cause tipping of the denture during the function the third is the occluso gingival height it refers to the height from the biting surface to the gum line so this height it is determined by the available inter arch distance so uh, suppose you, if you select a larger teeth in case with the inadequate interocclusal distance here uh, the altering the thickness of the denture base can be one of the uh, way to accommodate the large teeth while ensuring a natural appearance and proper function of the denture so to accommodate larger teeth in case with insufficient interocclusal distance modifying the denture base thickness can be done allowing proper teeth arrangement without appearing artificial so the occluso gingival height of the posterior teeth it is determined by available interarch distance positioning the occlusal plane at the midpoint for the optimal function now the selection of form of tooth it is influenced by various factors let us discuss them what are those factors the first is the condylar inclination second is the height of the residual ridge third is the patient age fourth is the ridge relationship and fifth is the hanau squint the first is the condylar inclination the condylar inclination it refers to the angle and steepness of the condylar guidance that plays an important role in determining the appropriate tooth form for a patient we know condylar guidance it is the movement of the mandible condyle in the glenoid fossa of the temporal bone so it is influenced by movement and position of mandible during jaw movements like protrusion and lateral exertion now the angle and steepness of the condylar guidance will impact the choice of the tooth form especially the cuspal height a patient uh, with a steep condylar guidance will experience greater teeth separation between upper and lower teeth during the protrusive movement so
so when condylar guidance it is steep during protrusion the mandible it tends to move further away from the upper jaw so in order to accommodate this increased separation between the jaw during protrusion teeth with high cuspal height they are preferred now what is the role of cuspal height the teeth with high cuspal height it maintains the proper occlusion and contact between upper and lower teeth ensuring that the jaw separation does not result in improper bite or the instability of the denture second is the height of the residual ridge well the depth or shallowness of the residual ridge would also impact the selection of tooth form the shallow cuspal teeth they are more suitable for the shallow ridges as they can better fit and provide improved functionality age play a important role in tooth selection teeth that are with shallower cusp they are often preferred for the older individual due to the potential changes in the oral structure and reduced functional demand uh, fourth is the ridge relationship the relation between the ridges influence the tooth selection for example zero degree or monoplane might be preferred in case of posterior cross bite to get a optimal occlusion now the zero or monoplane uh, they are characterized by a flat or single plane occlusion surface without showing any cuspal angulation so they might be preferred in case of posterior cross bite uh, why we prefer them in case of posterior cross bite or severe class 2 or class 3 mal occlusion where the teeth don't align properly uh, we prefer a flat surface that can more easily compensate for this discrepancy the flat surface of 0 degree uh, they can be set more easily especially in situation where complex cuspal relation might ex- exacerbate the existing mal occlusion so the absence of cuspal angulation in monoplane teeth they will reduce the interference during eccentric movements like the lateral or protrusive so the monoplane teeth will provide more stability in case where there may be uh, jaw discrepancy as flat occlusion surface can distribute forces even across the arch and reducing the chances of traumatic contacts or dislodgement of the dental process the last is the hanaus kunt it's a concept in prosthodontic that consider factor like con- condylar guidance incisal guidance cusp height ridge relation and compensate uh, compensating curve so this quint can guide the selection of the tooth form and occlusion design to achieve functional and aesthetic outcome now morphologically we can classify the teeth into cusp teeth cuspless teeth the cusp teeth can be further divided into anatomic teeth or the semi anatomic teeth the cusp teeth they have cusp and they are of two types anatomic and semi anatomic teeth what are anatomic teeth so the anatomic teeth they resembles the normal newly erupted teeth so they will provide the best aesthetics and are most commonly used uh the cusp here resembles normal dentition with angle of 33 degree so this 33 degree angle tooth with 33 degree angle cusp they are known as anatomic teeth anatomic teeth with 30 degree cuspal angulation they are also available and they are known as pilkington turner uh, tooth now the semi anatomic teeth they are also known as modified cusp or low cusp they may have 20 degree or 10 degree cuspal angulation the 10 degree uh, semi anatomic teeth they are also known as functional or anatoline teeth the second are the cuspless teeth they are also known as zero degree flat or monoplane teeth since they have no cuspal angulation so they are very flexible to set now let us discuss the advantages of the anatomic teeth first of all the anatomic teeth they will closely resemble the appearance of natural teeth so they will provide a highly aesthetic outcome for the denture second uh, they provide proper contour for crushing and triturating 
so they are uh, they are designed with the proper contour that aid in efficient crushing and grinding of the food and hence they can facilitate better mastication third is presence of adequate sluiceway that refers to channel or grooves that helps in proper flow of fluids like the saliva and helps in oral function and maintaining the oral hygiene the fourth is uh, the design of the anatomic teeth they contribute to improve chewing efficiency reducing excessive pressure exerted on the denture and oral tissue during mastication fifth anatomic teeth they allow for more vertical chewing strokes enhancing the functionality and comfort of the of the dental processes during chewing and biting movement and uh, sixth the cuspal align the cuspal inclines provide step to obtain eccentric balance so the cuspal inclines in anatomic teeth they contribute to achieve a balanced bite in various jaw position promoting the stability during the jaw movement other advantage is greater resistance to rotation of denture and comfortable position during contact of cusp in the fossa what are the disadvantages of these anatomic teeth the first is more difficult and time consuming to obtain a balance occlusion second settling results in damaging interferences and lateral stresses so over time settling or stabilization of occlusion can lead to interferences that can cause that can cause damage to uh, uh, that can cause damaging lateral stress during the jaw movement third is the vertical dimension it decreases and mandibular movement the settling may uh, lead to decrease in the vertical dimension at occlusion altering the jaw position the fourth is residual ridge resorption what are the advantages of the semi anatomic teeth the first of all they are easier to arrange and obtain balance occlusion second they can provide freedom if settling occur third is reduction of lateral stresses and provide all the advantages of a cusp teeth so the disadvantages of semi anatomic teeth they have a less aesthetic as the buccal cusp they are shorter that that might come compromise the aesthetic compared to the anatomic teeth second is less chewing efficiency the third are the cuspal cuspless teeth the advantages of zero degree cus uh, zero degree teeth they are easy to set up lift lateral stresses lift anterior posterior interference after settling uh, they are the best uh, they are the best for patient with poor muscular control so they are suitable for individual with compromised muscle control as they provide simplicity in function and stability they are best for patient with poor ridge relationship so they can offer stability and functionality what are the disadvantages so first is very difficult to obtain a balance occlusion in excursive movement it this happens due to their flat design second less chewing efficiency especially for the fibrous or tough food as they lack the traditional cusp that are necessary for effective food breakdown the third poor aesthetics they might not provide the most natural appearance compared to teeth design with anatomic feet so fourth is passive twelvement and anterior pressure during excursion that is uh that can cause excessive pressure and desorption in the anterior region uh due to the development of spaces posteriorly during jaw excursion that is also known as christensen phenomena so in a flat occlusion plane arrangement the absence of inclined cusp does not provide adequate support during lateral jaw movement as a result posterior teeth do not maintain contact leading to creation of gap so in absence of posterior tooth contact due to flat occlusion plane the mandible it moves forward causing the anterior teeth or the anterior region of prosthesis to receive excessive pressure and stress so the development of gap in the posterior region forces the mandible forward leading to increased pressure on the anterior teeth 
so this pressure can results in discomfort damage to the anterior teeth or even resorption of the bone due to excessive forces that are exerted on this area